Christy Clark Show here live in Ajax. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Woo. I love it. I love it. I love the energy. We are days away from Caravana, and guess what? We're going to have our little Caravana party right here, so. Everybody go with that? So before we start, uh, there's so much to talk about, and we want to go over some things. So what time is it? It's time for Hot Topics. Let's try that again. So everyone, when I say what time is it, you say Hot Topics. What time is it? Hot Topics! That's right. Thank you for that. I appreciate the encouragement. So what's going down now? How many people are watching the Commonwealth? Uh, wow. Nobody? One or two people? Okay, I have to admit I'm not watching it. But um, it's newsworthy. The Commonwealth Games actually started six days ago, and it is in Glasgow, Scotland. And um, anybody here from Jamaica? Yeah. Yes, I'm nice. Make some noise for yourself. But, um, Jamaica seems to be doing really well in the men's 100. Uh, Kemar Bailey Cole came home with the gold. So, And then uh, a bronze for the 100 from Jamaica. And then the women's uh, 100, uh, Veronica Campbell Brown brought home the silver. So seem to be dominating in track and field. We, we are the fastest. Sorry, other islands, but we are. Um, and the medal tracker so far, number one is Australia. They've got uh, 30 gold, 25 silver, and am I seeing this right? 32 bronze. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of medals. And then Canada, I guess you want to know how we're doing, right? Yeah. Canada is five. Oh. Well, how many Commonwealth countries are there? Well, that makes a difference. Uh, but they're number five, and there's nine gold, eight, three silver, and 12 bronze. So that makes a total of 24 medals. So yes, big up Canada. All right, so that's what's going on. And the, the Commonwealth Games are in the 20th, the 20th Commonwealth. So some people say, well, how come you know, the Soviet Union and, and the US aren't involved? Well, because they don't answer to a queen or a king, right? They have to be part of the British Empire. So that's how we got lucky. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what else is going on? Caravana weekend. Yeah. How many people are going out for the parties, for the festivities? How many people are going to the parade? Make some noise. Yeah. I only went once. I've only been once. So it's time for me to go again. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually from Montreal, so I used to go to the Cara Fête or the Cara Fiesta is what they call it now, and, and that was like a little mini version, like the, the dress rehearsal for the Caravana here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I am going to go this year, so you'll see me jumping for sure. And I have a, an awesome costume left from the, the June 18th unveiling of the costume by uh, Caliente Costumes, so I'll be wearing that again. Um, to, actually, tomorrow I will be in New York City. So I'm a woman on the go. I'm leaving right after the show, and uh, we are taping in Times Square at Funkadelic Studios at 7 p.m., and uh, we have a great show. Uh, um, people from all walks of life. Luisa Otero, she's a relationship expert, and I have uh, Matthew L. Taylor, who is an author, and uh, two performances by New Yorkers forever. He is uh, more of a gospel tip, and Japan, who is R&B. So when that is taped, I will have it for you, but it's going to be a great time. If anybody want to come down to New York with me, hey, you know, we're, we're leaving at midnight. Okay? You're welcome to come. You're welcome to come. Got a fantastic show for you. Uh, make some noise for the beautiful Miss Jamaica Universe 2006. Yendi Phillips is here. <laughs> Dr. Susan Walker. She's here. We also have the Jamaican comedy queen, Malika Bryce. She's there. And then we've got performances by award winning reggae artists, none other than Skibu yeah. and Juno winner, correction. So don't go anywhere. You're here at the Nikki Clark Show next night. Yeah. Founder of In the Dance.
Dance Jamaica, Yendi Phillips. January of this year. Already, was it already January? It was January, yeah. yeah. And it was freezing. Of course, it was January. <laughs> it, was, it was freezing. It was probably the coldest, the coldest day in January. It was like minus 30 in the shade. And in the sun as well. <laughs> and, and, you, and you're here in the coldest day of July as well. What, yeah. What's up with that? But this is supposed to be summer, no? Yeah. Isn't this summer? Yeah. So I needed the jacket. I couldn't like wear it all. But no, it's actually, we had a couple of nice days. Um, one day I went in shorts, still with a sweater, but nonetheless, it's been lovely, it's been lovely. That's awesome. Now, tell us again um, a little bit about your background, uh, Miss Jamaica Universe. I mean, that is, that is huge. It's a big accomplishment. So please give her a <laughs> What were some of the, the lessons you learned through the whole journey of becoming um, the queen? Uh, so, what I will tell you, for those of you who may not know, is that I was Miss Jamaica Universe in 2010, and I came second in the Miss Universe pageant, or first runner-up, as they like to put it. And uh, lessons, more, more, I think more than anything else, my what I what, what was highlighted for me was to just go for it. You know, um, you know, all of us have these things that we dream about or we see in our mind's eye and we feel intimidated or afraid. Um, I think what's most important is to go for it and not let you fear or hold you back. Uh, and I'm really happy that I went for that and I did that. And it's opened so many doors for me and so many opportunities have come my way um, all by just putting fear behind me and just attacking something full force, full, like, tunnel vision. And, so, yeah. and, and you have to have that fearless attitude about going through, like, uh, you know, walks that people haven't taken, paths that people haven't taken, and, and one that, that you did. So fearlessly conquered that. And now you're fearlessly conquering the DVD world uh, with your amazing dance hall fitness workout. Now, I, I have some feedback uh, for you because when, when you, uh, by the way, these, when, when, when Yendi brought this in January um, to our audience, everyone was complaining, the ones who did not get, they were so <laughs> upset because they just flew. They just like, everyone wanted them grabbing them. And, and the ones uh, who tried out the exercise, they are so thankful for you because oh, not only is it fun, but they just firmed up in, in a matter of weeks because this really works. So thank you for that. Thank you. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. I, we just got done filming number two, and I can definitely say it works. I have um, some very sore thighs standing in front of you and are very pained up but quite firm. But. <laughs> no, you say but. But don't say anything else with a baby. <laughs> like what? I don't know. Bust? Oh, okay. No, I won't, I won't say. But we can't say the other B word, baby. She had a baby not too long ago. So, gorgeous bust. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, you know what? So, I have a background in dance. So, I started dancing at three years old. And I continued to dance right up until I did a Bachelor of Fine Arts in dance. So, dance is uh, my profession. And then, uh, Jamaican culture is my thing. You know what I mean? You can't go and try and be the queen for a country and you don't know your own culture. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, if my background is dance and I know Jamaican culture, what better way than to put it together? Well, there you go. Right. Look at you. Good at math and stuff. So, yeah. So, here it is that I've created something within the dance fitness uh, Jamaica, but dance is what I do. So, even throughout my pregnancy, I was dancing. Post-pregnancy, I was dancing. So, it just makes a lot of sense, you know what I mean? Yeah, and we're blessed to have it, so thank you very much, Miss Phillips. All right, so I think we are waiting to see some of the, uh, the moves that you're going to share with us. I'm going to show you some moves, Nikki, but before I show you some moves, I need to know if you're ready. I didn't stretch properly. Is that going to be a problem? No, I'll stretch you. Oh, <laughs> I'll stretch you. <laughs> wait, 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 before I stretch you, stretch I didn't you. sign a waiver. <laughs> the DVD, however, is available for everyone here. It's available at walmart.ca. It's also available at HMV 
uh, in Ontario. And we're coming to iTunes very soon. What? You know we have to do things large. We are Jamaican, we don't small up small up. Um, and number two is coming really soon. Really soon, like next week? Soon? Today? Don't push it. <laughs> push yourself because we're going to dance now. So. Okay. All right. Maybe some of the audience can uh, yeah, work it out with us. Sure, yeah. Who would like to come and dance with Yandy and myself? Oh, there we go. Come on now. Easy now. Easy now. Look, they're just charging us. You don't have to ask this lovely lady twice. Okay. So, um, DJ, let's put the music on a little low and then we'll follow your cue. I have to like some people. She wants to slow wine and not fast wine. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do, the first we're going to do actually is, gonna, let's first do something called Ringo. Okay? Ringo. 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 So, a new, new dance, fresh, 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 just came out. Called Ringo. Ringo. Ringo? No. Alright. So, you're going to pick up your right knee. Yeah? So, just pick up your knee and then bounce. Everybody get up and try it. And there you go. So now whenever you pick up your knee, you're going to dip your arms down. So you're going to almost scoop. See? So easy. Right? Okay. So you have that part. Now after you do that, you're going to open your legs. Oh boy. And then open the legs. And then come back together. So step left, step right, step together. Now every time you step with the legs, you're going to move with the arms as well. So open, open, together. Yes. So left leg, right leg, together. Again, left leg, right leg, together. The other leg. That's your right, the other leg. So you go left leg with your right arm. Right, that's, that's, that's the one. And then right leg, left arm behind you, and then together. Okay, so you're gonna put it together. So you're going to go one, two, three, together. One, two, three, together. And there's a body said tree. <laughs> Jamaican in the audience. One, two, left heel, one, two, then you have 
my right and left and right and left. So now we're going to add some, add some speed, yes? Ready to bring up tempo? Five, six, five, six, right, left. One, two, three, four. Bend over now, bend over. Yes, mommy. Then one, two, one. to earn them, okay? So we'll come back and you will get one or two of these dance tickets with the beautiful Yandy Phillips. Isn't she amazing? And where can people find you, Yandy? So I can be found on, is it me personally? Or what do you want to do? I think you take it, but um, your business. Just kidding. So you can go to www.inthedancefitness.com for all the information that we just gave you. And again, you can also go to walmart.ca to purchase the DVD or HMV stores in Ontario, or you can soon go to iTunes. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with some more dance. Please, happy Come on, come on, come on. 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 The Nikki Clark Show, taping live at the Garden Hilton Inn in Ajax, and uh, standing, or sorry, sitting with me in the hot seat is the author of Thoughts of a Fractured Soul, Kern Carter. Please welcome him. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you doing? Awesome, awesome. I'm, I'm looking at your book, and it looks like it's a quick read. Yeah, definitely. Ah, it's, it's, uh, so tell me, um, before we get into the book, what was your journey leading towards becoming an author? It's not a road many have traveled. Yeah, yeah <laughs> But um, being an author is something very special. It takes a very special talent. Mm -hmm. So what, um, what made you become um, an author? I mean, really, it's always kind of been in me. I mean, I mean, I remember writing my first story in grade three. Like, it was kind of like a Lion King type of story. Um, but like directly on this path, it started about six, seven years ago when I first kind of had the idea that I really wanted to be an author. I really had a story that I wanted to tell. So I, I, I didn't know exactly how to, how to, how to kind of go ahead and, and take that path. So I just started writing. I started writing specifically about my life, although I knew that's not the story I wanted to tell. Right. I just didn't want to procrastinate and wait. So I just really started writing about my life. And within that, I found the story that I really wanted to tell. And that's what you have in front of you. Okay. And when did this begin? Thoughts of a fractured soul. When did you start writing this? Um, I I would say I mean I I I it was it was part of the journey. So I would say about six years ago it started. It had a different title. It was called I think it was called For My Independence. That's what I originally called it. But um, and originally it was like three hundred pages. It was just like a lot of writing. I had so much in my in my mind that I wanted to get out. So um, 
once I narrowed it down and once I really found a story though, it took really about three or four months and then it was like really fast. And, and it's really short, like you said, it's only about 72 pages, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't get caught up in, oh, it has to be long for, it to, for me to feel like an author or, or whatever that case is. Like I, I really had a specific story I wanted to tell and that's, that's what it came out to be. It's not about the length, it's not about the, the product, it's about the process. Exactly, right? exactly. So tell me a little bit uh, about Thoughts of a Fractured Soul. What uh, um, can we expect? A lot, hopefully, but I, I try to tell a, a pretty simple story. But what what I what I hope people take out of it is that um, no matter what kind of walk of life that you come from, the most important thing that's going to shape you are the decisions that you make, right? So with thoughts of a fractured soul, this person, the the main character, his name is Corey. He's coming from a place of expectation. So he's not. I didn't want to tell a rags to riches story. I didn't want to tell a story where um, someone's poor, they make the right decision, they get rich and successful. Right. I told a story really of stagnation. So Corey is is. He's, has he's stuck. No, yeah, he's stuck. He has, no family, pro, he has yeah. no family problems. He has no money issues. He's really gifted. He's really talented. But he still makes decisions that end up, that he actually doesn't go anywhere. It makes it kind of leads him down a path of stagnation, like I said before. So really, that's kind of the story I wanted to tell. And I want to really emphasize that it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter what walk of life you come from. Decisions are the most important part of your life. So. Okay. Mm. The, the, the decisions can keep you where they where you are, exactly. or they can propel you or they can propel onto you. another path. Yeah. So does Corey become unstuck, or is that telling too much? Um, I mean, if you could read it, you could figure out for yourself. Because to me, life has no clear ending. There's no one path that you can take, and he takes several paths. He makes decisions that he thinks are great, and and end up down the road being poor decisions. He make he makes decisions like opposite, where he thinks, oh, you know, this is really not a good decision, but it ends up really kind of um, setting his life down a different path. So. Um, once you read it, you get a, an idea of it. I purposely made it short because I wanted to, I wanted people to read it like on an airplane ride or on a bus ride from here to Montreal or something like that. You know what I mean? So like I kind of or really a car want... ride to New York City. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Tonight that would be perfect. Okay, fantastic. And is this your first book? It's my first book. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what can uh... What's going to be happening in the future? Is there a part two to this? Um, no part two yet. I'm working a on movie? other stories. Movie? I hope <laughs> that would be amazing. But no, like I really, I, I really want people to focus on this one. Like I mean, I took a lot of time with it. Like I said, it's it's really six years in the making. Um, I got a Canadian, a Toronto artist to actually do the cover of the book. Uh, his name is Dion Fitzgerald. He, he he put that together for me. It took a couple of trial runs, but he put that together for me. Um, so it was great. It's been like an, a really great experience. And this is just the beginning. I really want everyone to know that like. Being an author is something I actually dreamed of doing, something I take seriously every day. I wake up every morning and this is what I this is what I really do, this is what I love to do. So this for me is just the beginning. Putting out a book, a lot of people ask me how do I feel? I must feel so happy putting out a book. I, I feel like I don't wanna feel like ungrateful, but I really just do feel like I haven't accomplished anything at all yet. Like this is really just the, the, the beginning for me. I really want to be the best author, first in Canada, then in the world, and then just take it from there. See how far congratulate you. I, you. I also am an author and I know how long, how arduous, it's It's like giving birth. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> no, not that hard, but, but kind of, uh, because you know, there's a lot of preparation and uh -huh. then you're expecting this, this you know, baby at the yeah, end. Yeah. So you have to go through, through some of the labor pains, but it's so well worth it. Definitely. It's yeah. very rewarding and uh, yeah. Where can people get a copy of this? Um, I mean, you could go online mostly, you could get it from chapters, online at chapters, online on Amazon, but just go to my website, currentcarter.com and you can find everything everything there plus my other blog stuff you can find them also and guess what you can get it here tonight how about that <laughs> again where can uh, people find you online um everything is current carter so k-e-r-n carter uh twitter is current carter facebook current carter um goodreads i'm on goodreads current carter my website is current carter really it's just it's all me so no 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 funny names here no funny names, <laughs> no funny names. okay fantastic uh again i want to congratulate you, you and thank you so much for stopping by and thank when you. you have the other book come back and we'll I talk will. about it thank you all right we'll be right back with some more good stuff from going on. show and we just had an awesome workout I'm all stretched and limber and ready to go for uh, another amazing interview with the lovely dr. Susan Walker thank you so much for joining thank me thank you for having me yeah, give her a <laughs> now uh, you are a
are a licensed uh, naturopathic doctor. Yes. And you have been very um, instrumental in transforming women's lives and the way they see their natural hair. Yes. So let's talk about that. What made you go into that? line of profession, by the way? Well, naturopathic, my mother was a, a medical doctor. She was an anesthesiologist, so she gave you the injections and the anesthetics to go to sleep. And so I was exposed to that throughout my entire life, but there was just something about that, what she practiced that just didn't really sit with me in terms of chronic disease and just a lot of the things that people are encountering these days. So in university, I was uh, picking my profession and I did, um, I, I shadowed a physiotherapist and I was like, not for me at all. So I'm searching, searching for what I want to do. And then someone puts me on to naturopathic medicine and I researched it, researched the philosophy and the rest is history. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Now you have also um, had a very special journey. You mm -hmm. lost 60 pounds. Yes. That yes. is fantastic. <laughs> Losing weight um, is not easy. No. So how did it happen for you? Can you talk about your weight loss? Sure. Well, I was um, the integrative medical director at a popular weight loss clinic for the past six years. And in that time period, I was overweight and in denial. And I had my aha moment after the birth of my second child where I looked at a picture and I said, enough is enough. Yeah. And I was coaching people and the staff and clients on how to lose weight, but not really realizing or accepting that I had to lose weight myself. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I saw that picture that I said enough. And then I started running and then changed my diet and stayed the course and lost the weight. And you know, just how, got to where I am right now. How long did it take you to two lose? Two years. It took you two yeah, years. Yeah, two years so that I've maintained. So you did it slowly? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. And, and what were some of the things that you changed? In I your diet or your lifestyle to make that happen? Sure. The first thing I changed was I cut out juice. That was the first thing. I drank only water, and to this day I drink exclusively water. I Would you like some more water? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're hydrated? I, I'm hydrated oh, enough. Okay. Uh, but that was a big thing because I drank too much juice, and that's you know additional calories in the form of, you, you know, beverages and you don't want to drink your calories right okay. you want to get them from food I mean it's good to have uh, natural sugars but yeah. sugar is sugar sugar is sugar yeah. right um, and then I, I started running uh, before I had my first daughter my eldest daughter who's five I was active I was a fitness instructor I was a personal trainer and then I started working full-time a nine-to-five job and my whole schedule turned upside down and I had my children and you know the story right uh, you don't have time and so things changed and all that went out the window. Sure. So I started being active again. Mm -hmm. And then I started feeling motivated as I lost the weight. And you know, you feel good, you get compliments. And you know, I can wear bright colors because I used to wear a lot of black, right? Because black is very slimming. It's slimming. It's yes. slimming. And then that pushed me to, to, to go further and to get to where I, I needed to be and, and stay there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, for my own journey too, I mean, mm -hmm. my weight has fluctuated, you know, after children or you go through a life changing yeah. moment, it goes up and down. But um, I remember uh, having a moment too when I said, I need to really make a change. Mm -hmm. uh, coming from a very athletic background, always being, you know, fit and then having children. And then um, I remember at one particular barbecue, we were taking pictures and I just mm -hmm. took everyone I could find just to <laughs> circle around me so they could only see my neck yeah. and everything else covered. And I knew no, I, I had to make that change. Yes. But uh, that, that happens. But you know what? There are things that people do that sabotage their weight loss. And one of the things that I was doing was thinking that not eating was going to help with the weight loss. But what it does, it, it um, slows down your metabolism. Yeah, and, and you know, it's good that you should mention that because that's a myth that uh, people are told that not eating slows down your metabolism. That's a myth. That is a myth. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot of the stuff I do when it comes to helping clients is based on a lot of research because over the past six years, I kind of, my, my boss used to say, wow, did you have your PhD yet? Because it would be a full-time job of just researching proper ways to lose weight and just looking at all that. And when it comes to not eating, not eating actually shifts your body or your metabolism into fat burning. So that's actually what happens when you, when you fast. Mm -hmm. And your metabolism doesn't really slow down until after 72 hours of not eating. So three full days of not eating, your metabolism will slow down. Okay. But skipping one meal, like breakfast, it's not going to do anything unless it causes you to overeat later on in the day, which for most people it does. Okay. So let's talk about some more myths uh, yeah. that people uh, think, you know, is their trigger or their way to weight loss. 
So you just spoke about one. Yep. What, are, what are a couple others that well, people do? Well, the myth about eating, you know, five to six meals a day. Um, the research shows that you don't have to do that if you eat three meals a day or five if you eat the same amount of calories mm -hmm. and you're at a calorie deficit because you do need to reduce your calories to lose weight, right. you will lose weight. Okay. So you don't have to eat every two to three hours. I remember one time I was on a, a diet program that, and I was obsessed. So I had my containers, I had my baggies. What time is it? Is it you know time for me to eat? Right. And my life just revolved around that and I just couldn't do it. It just didn't fit my lifestyle. Okay. So that's another myth as well. You don't have to do that. You no, don't but there's to... portion control involved. Yes, yeah. yeah, portion control, but not eating every two to three hours. You don't have to be obsessed about that. Okay, and, and what's another one that... Uh... Another one is you know, eating late at night will cause you to gain weight. I know a lot of people who, if they don't eat late at night, it causes them to lose weight. And if they do eat, at, eat late at night, it causes them to lose so weight. It's individual. So it's individual and it just depends on how your calories are portioned throughout the day. Because like I said, to lose weight, you do have to, you know, eat less than you actually burn. Okay. So if that's at night time in a you know specific time period, then so be it. If not, then you'll still lose weight as well. So that's another myth. Okay, awesome. And, and um, what I was going to uh, ask you was the, the thing about breakfast time, having a very strict time to eat. Breakfast can be the first thing that you eat for the day. Yep. Like sometimes people have um, shifts where they work during the evening and they get up uh, maybe one o'clock in the afternoon ready for the next shift. Yep. They're having breakfast at one o'clock. Yep. Uh, that's still okay, isn't that's it? That's okay. I'll tell you a secret. I, I don't eat breakfast sometimes okay. and I'm fine. Um, my appetite, I don't have an appetite in the morning. Okay. I don't overdo it later on, but I, and I can control what I eat. But the problem with not eating certain meals is that sometimes it causes you to just binge when you, when you get to eat. So that's the problem. So it's about being satiated. It's about, yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's okay. not about not overdoing it. And not overdoing yeah. it. Let's talk about natural hair yeah. and, and uh, the whole movement about uh, you know, loving your, your, your natural hair. Yeah. How did, how did that manifest in your life? So after the birth of my first daughter, um, my hair fell out which typically happens um, because of uh, the, the hormonal, hormonal change. Changes, yeah. So it was just shedding, shedding, shedding. And I think most importantly, I'm adopted, so I have no clue who my biological parents are. So when I saw this little baby, this was the only person in the world that I knew shared my DNA. And mm -hmm. she was a beautiful little girl. I looked at her hair, I said, wow, where did that come from? Because I don't have that hair, and does my husband? So I was so curious, and it was so important to me that she loved her natural hair, that I decided to just <coughs> chop mine all off because of the shedding and because of that. And so from there, I started on the journey of to, to discover how to take care of my hair. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, the, there were some gaps in Canada at the time. This was you know, f a few years ago. There weren't as many products on the market um, as there are now. Right. And so I couldn't find what I needed, so I created it. For, okay. for me. And what's your company called? For Earth Naturals? Tones Naturals. Okay. And it's a successful company. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. It's been four years. Okay. Four and years. You go out to the community, you do outreach, and you train people on how to yep. Workshops. manage your hair. Yeah. I just came back from Atl the Atlanta Hair Show uh, this I year. I hear that's a big show. Yeah. It? It's yeah. a huge, huge show. Um, and so that was great. Um, and then I'm doing the Toronto Natural Hair Show in September. Right. And then I do have my little workshops and my hair parties where you know women get together and you know I come in and do some, some hair shows. Uh, talks about hair and and it's fun so yeah it, a, a lot of that's involved and the, sh the products are in different stores and okay, it's good fantastic now where can people go to find you whether it's for the natural hair or for weight loss so the natural hair is earthtonesnaturals.com that's e-a-r-t-h t-o-n-e-s naturals.com and I have some brochures and then the weight loss is naturalmedweightloss.com and our clinic is here in Ajax Oh, it's totally right here. It's What's the address here in Ajax? 8 Old Kingston Road. Um, that's Old that's Kingston Road in church. No? Okay. Yeah. And, and I've got really great, um, two really great girls that work with me that used to work with me at the other clinic that I was at that are great at helping women and men okay. reach their weight loss goals. All right. And uh, what if someone is contemplating going natural, what would you advise them? Oh, wow. <laughs> There's so if, much. If they've embraced Just, a certain style for so long. Yeah. I think... Um, I think the most important thing is in order to go natural, you have to fully embrace it. Right. And so because of the movement now, don't feel pressured to do it. Make sure that natural hair is for you because it's not less work. It's actually more work. Mm -hmm. okay. It's more work. Okay. Yes. And depending on the hair texture and the length of your hair, it's more work than having relaxed hair or chemically treated hair. So just think about it and, and kind of, you know, count the cost first. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for uh, sharing your pearls of wisdom. And uh, definitely, if you have anything else to share, we'd love to hear from you. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Walker. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with.
with the comedy stylings of Malika Bryce. <laughs> Manitoba. Manitoba. No, we're in Toronto. 
Um, <laughs> so I pick up the east side, right, every time, every single time. But um, if I were to move to the west, obviously I would pick up the west, because you know we're loyal. So, um, <laughs> but the problem is I'm telling you Scarborough people, please, please, don't invite me. Don't invite me to your ghetto barbecues anymore. Do you understand? The, 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 I love you, Scarborough people, but I went to the barbecue, okay, full of people, you know, all from, like, ants, like, people devout, right? Not one restroom facilities, not one. There was no adjoining building, there was no porta potty, there was no, there was no Tim Hortons, there was nothing, nothing, nothing. Listen, people, maybe you don't know, you know, maybe you don't know, but I'm somebody now, okay? I'm somebody, I can't go hitch behind no tree, and I, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Because next thing you know, it's on YouTube, and you know what I mean? People will pass it around, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm behind the tree, right? And <laughs> I'm fully behind the tree. And ladies, you know the stoop. You know, you know how you do the you, you know how you do the stoop already, right? So my girls, my girls are all protecting me and thing, and I mean I do the stoop and you know, I me mean, I watch out for the paparazzi, you know, you know what I mean? And I know you're saying Malika, which paparazzi, but it's alright. I have I have dreams, right? So So How Great the Wart is a song that, in, that is an inspiration from me, for me, from the streets of Trenton, Jamaica, coming out over here in uh, Toronto. So DJ, squeeze! Try to get 
So long, it's actually won an award back in England. Woo! Um, a video, you know, so uh, you can check it out. www.skibofaster.com. Okay, on the channel. Since I've seen your face 
What a beautiful space How we were back in my girl It's been so long Since I've seen your smile What a beautiful smile Can see us walking down the aisle I want to say thank you very much, thank you for having me. Thank you. My name is Skibu, S-K-I-B-U, Pastor. Twitter, Facebook, website. Thank you. Skibu, you're amazing. Thank you. Again, shout out for Skibu, Pastor. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is officially a wrap. Thank you so much for being a part of the Nikki Clark Show, coming out supporting. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Skibo again, thank you. Give him, keep, keep the guys coming. Correction. Dr. Susan Walker. Belinda Bryce. 